and what better way to start off the podcast than having none other than Schaefer Bates as the first guest. Schaefer is an unbelievably talented impressionist. He's a good friend of mine. We've worked together before. We've had great fun making content together over the last few years. Uh, we met each other four years ago, I believe. It was in Cork in uh, Keen and Keen to me and Emily's apartment in Cork. Um, so yeah, thank you to Keen and Emily for, for bringing the two of us together, myself and Schaefer. Um, we talk about his past, how he started doing impressions, um, his work with the Game of Thrones impressions, the, the work that kind of shot him to another level. Um, he does The Walking Dead, Peaky Blinders, so many impressions, his Gordon Ramsay videos. This is a great podcast. This, this is two mates, Having a good chat for an hour and 15 minutes. I hope you enjoy it. Sit back, relax, have a good time. Welcome to the Impressionable Hour with Al Thorne, episode one, Schaefer Bates. Have a good one. And we're live. We are live. Welcome to the first episode of the Impressionable Hour with Al Thorne. And I'm delighted to be joined. Delighted to be joined by my pal, my fellow comrade, Schaefer Bates, the legendary <laughs> impressionist himself. You should have uh, you should have introduced that as Joe Rogan three, two, one. <laughs> How you doing? Talk, I mean, I wish I could talk for ten minutes about sponsors. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day, mate. One day, we'll get there. Listen, how are you feeling? Um, you tested positive for the coronavirus on yeah. Sunday. Um, chlamydia and hiv are there as well but we'll put them on the back burner <laughs> yeah no i feel i feel good mate a little bit tight chested but i yeah. think i'm all uh as I was saying to you on, i think i'm all but but over it now okay. i just uh i i was one of the people when it i should say when it was first talked about i was like i was buying into the whole ah it's just flu more people die yeah. of flu and then they had that um epidemiologist on joe rogan who said it's no good saying that because it's just just started yeah. um so you know when i got told the other day that I, i've got it i was like oh shit yeah i believe uh, he said he was uh, like a detective on viruses that's what he, he yeah. kind of proclaimed himself as so yeah he literally goes to war with them every day um yeah. but no i i feel fine um i think i've had all the worst symptoms okay. um but um i i feel great so i don't think i'm gonna die just yet unfortunately for the well, people who don't like my content <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah what like like one person two people that's it pal uh, everyone a, everyone likes your content there's a there's a couple of handful of people with football crests and yeah. LU, lufc <laughs> 1969 in their twitter alias and <laughs> they believe in edl and get the immigrants out oh um, we, we we get them everywhere we get in dublin i get them too oh great well do you know what it's, it's and, and i'm not going to go to war with the the Irish demographic, because I love Ireland. It's, it's a great place. But yeah. if I if I ever get any <laughs> any shit on my videos, I'll go to their profile, and it usually says like Mac uh, Mac L U F C or Mac M U F C seventy nine <laughs> from Dublin. So it's some uh, <laughs> some lad from Dublin. He's like, hey, this is shit. Well, this I get a, I get a lot of shit from Liverpool fans because. I'm I'm an outspoken Manchester United fan on my Twitter. A lot of people know that. Um, and it's mainly Liverpool fans. A lot of Liverpool fans from Dublin, not all of them, that yeah. give me a ton of shit on my content. How can they give you... Like, uh, this confuses me. I don't know how, number one, they can give you shit on your content. You do impressions, <laughs> same as I do. Like, imagine yeah. hating someone, right? This is what I try... <laughs> like trying to work out quantum fucking physics. How, imagine hating someone for doing a voice of someone else. Yeah, it's well, not it's, like... But even with your Man United tweets, it's not even like you're going scummy Liverpool, Scousers. No. Rob. You're just going, I, this is what I feel like the team is, and this is where I feel it's not progressing. And it's like people are going out of their way like to come into your house and insult yeah. your brand new carpet you put down, and then you say to them, well, fucking get your shoes off my carpet, <laughs> and then they kick off a fuss. They're in your house insulting <laughs> your carpet. Get out, and then they oh, I don't get it. Well, I never, see, I never focus, I don't focus on Liverpool now as a United fan, because yeah. Liverpool are in a class of their own. Uh -huh. They're, I think, nearly 40 points ahead of Man United at, at the table. And uh -huh. they're all loving it now. I've had mates that have supported Liverpool 
since school and yeah. you know they they've struggled for years they've had me in their ear laughing at yeah. them every year because they haven't won the premier league i think they've had everyone so, in their ear laughing at them so, and, and i'd say let let them have that little bit of success you know <laughs> let them have it see, but even when you say it like that <laughs> even then i see it like, a little, a little come. <laughs> come on come and win your title you deserve well, it you're a newcastle fan yeah, so I've got a sort of affinity to Liverpool. Uh, in my family, you read that there's like my one uncle's a, a Man United fan. My granddad uh, was from Newcastle, so I was yeah. a tsunami fan because of him. And then all the other uncles are, are Liverpool fans. But yeah, I'm a <clears throat> Newcastle fan through and through. I'd say I've only sort of really, I really got into him in the, over the last eight or nine years. Uh, yeah. I watched him a lot as a kid. And then, uh, you know, Alan Shearer, Les Ferdinand. Um, all yeah. them days um but yeah the mate, world I, record for shearer in 97 transfer I, record it's sad <laughs> it's sad <laughs> where they are now well they're not bad but it's just like uh, i just don't i i don't uh i don't think steve bruce is gonna uh, is gonna do much with that I think, team. I, well i actually think he came he came into the job under a lot of scrutiny uh-huh. um from yourself as well because you do a very good steve bruce impression <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I'm uh, I'm very <laughs> happy with the way we're playing. We're parking <laughs> ten players behind the ball and leaving Joe Linton on his own. Oh, he's um. <laughs> look, I I like him as a person, and I'm sure you yeah. will because he's he's ex United. But Absolutely. I I just think um. I don't know. He's only started playing to the strengths of the players in the last four or five games after people have said, look, this isn't working. Mm. Isaac Hayden literally came up to him off the side of the pitch going, this isn't working. So yeah. I think he started playing a, um, he started playing a four, three, two, one or something. And now you've got Almiron on the score sheet, Maximum on the score sheet. Joe, yeah. Lins, he's not scoring, but he's assisting. Um, yeah. He started playing to like Almiron has come into his own now. Like he's, he's scored in the last, five or six games, I think. I mean, some of them were FA Cup. Yeah. He's confident now. He looks like a, you know, he looks he, good. You've always been an admirer of him as well. Yeah, I think Almiron, he's I remember when they signed Almiron and yeah, he had you quite excited. I think it's just because he's a workhorse, mate. I think he just, I, do, I don't mm. care what team you come from. If you're putting a shift in for the team, it's like uh, Patrick Vieira said about um, St. Maximum. He said he's lazy defensively. He's, he's not. He's been great for Newcastle, tracking mm. back. Uh, Almiron just runs and runs and runs and runs. And there was a mm. point where I thought, Man United need a player like that until Bruno Fernandes came in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, you know my stance with Bruno Fernandes. Yeah. I, I think there's no need to have Paul Pogba in that team when Bruno Fernandes is there. And he clearly no. has a better attitude than Paul Pogba. And I know... You know, us United fans are so divided over Paul Pogba. <clears throat> yeah. there's, there's one group that thinks that Paul Pogba hasn't got the best attitude and maybe it is best for him to, to leave the club. Yeah. And then there's, a, there's another side that appreciate Pogba and bring up his statistics from last season that he scored 13 goals and I think he got nine assists. Yeah, yeah. You know? But is that if he plays alongside Bruno Fernandes, for example, is, is, is it going to be a clash of an ego then? Is it going to be like, well... I think he's uh, something better than him because, as far as I'm concerned, Bruno at the moment, when you watch him on the ball, he's so calm and composed. Yeah. And it's, it's therapeutic to watch. Well, I don't even get frustrated with Bruno Fernandes when he loses the ball because yeah. I know he's going to chase back uh-huh. and, and, and retrieve it yeah. in, in any way possible. Yeah. Like, th- that's, that's the kind of player he is. He, he's a hard working player, uh-huh. um, he brings a bit of quality to the team. It, it's kind of like, and, and Paul Scholl said it. Um, he's and my my own brother said it as well. He's kind of brought this. It's, it's kind of like when Cantona signed. Yeah, yeah. In, um, in ninety two from Leeds. Now, obviously, that team was far better than this team right now. But yeah. it's it's that it has that same effect on the team. Uh huh. Like he's lifted so many other players. Yeah, the, it's know? nice to see you all laughing and smiling when you score goals again. I know, like, yeah. It all looks good. Like he's, he, everyone looks great since he's been on the pitch. And he's not afraid to try and dink a ball over a back four or a back mm. five. And, and, people, and then there's players actually running on to it now. Yeah. He's made Fred look good again. And I was a big fan of Fred. Yeah. Into United. And Fred actually looks decent again now. Yeah. But th- well, that's <laughs> what people are proposing. If, if Pogba is to stay, um, it's Bruno in the number 10 role and Pogba and Fred sitting deep behind them. Yeah. You know, and potentially that could be 
um, a world class midfield three. Yeah, it would be, yeah, but you be. have you also have McTominay there, and Matic has actually started performing again uh-huh. since, since um, at the start of Christmas. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Look, listen. My my view on Pogba is he's um, he's a world class player, unbelievable ability. Uh, pro- probably in terms of ability, he's probably the best midfielder in the world. Like you think, yeah, ability, yeah, physicality, passing, shooting. He has every single attribute to his game. Yeah, is he is he consistent with it? No, that's my view on yeah. Pogba. That's interesting. That is, I. I... I think he's an all-round good midfield. I, I, I always think like his agent has a big influence on his attitude. Massively. Um, but, but then, didn't Fergie get rid of him a couple of years ago? Uh, Fergie got rid of him because of the agent, Mina Raiola. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, there we yeah. are then. So um, is he, Fergie, yeah. Fergie called him, I think he called him a wanker in a press conference. <laughs> he, goes, he, goes, he, said, I li-, he says, I like Pogba. Well, I like Pogba. He's a great player. I don't like his agent. Absolute wanker. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's what was said. Ballsy man. Ballsy. Yeah. Oh, he. Yeah. He's the very definition of ballsy. Yeah. But um, no. Like I, I've always found you to be a pleasant person to talk to about football. Yeah. You know, I, there's I, I mean, a bit like that. <laughs> but I no. Know. But but you're pleasant to talk to about it. There's no. There's no uh, like everyone's. <laughs> Football is such an aggressive medium. Everyone yeah, it is, just yeah. wants to get angry about it. Everyone wants to compare stats. Everyone wants to just uh, harp on about this and that, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I, I, it's, for me, like, it is literally... Well, you'll, you'll start to see me get a bit wound up towards the end of the season, um, which I'm sort of glad that I think the season's going to be yeah. non void because even though I think Newcastle were going to finish maybe 11th, 12th, which is all right, um, for the team, yeah, I, I, I feel I felt them slipping down the the, the table again. So you, you'll find in the last sort of eight games of the season, um, I I start getting a bit, yeah, I do get a bit passionate and do because usually I'm like, of course, if it's like, yeah, uh, if it's December, January, and we've lost two or three games in a row, it's Newcastle, right? Which I, mm. horrible to say, but um, I'll go okay. Really, we should look at this next game and just move on to the next game. And I'm I'm usually quite nonchalant about it, but when it gets to the last eight games, um, and it's business you know, time. Yeah, and then you've got. Uh, I remember last season uh, with Rafa Benitez, and we were beating Liverpool. Um, actually, all over Liverpool in the uh, last part of the season. Um, yeah. Things. Iosi Perez scored one, um, two as it was Solomon Rondon. Yeah, it ended up being three two to Liverpool. We were all over Liverpool, and I was like, yeah. this is we're going to be the first team to beat them here. This I, remember, is... I remember that game. Yeah, they were all over them. Just made them look mm. silly. And um, and this, uh, everyone was celebrating because Newcastle yeah. were winning. And it was underdogs as well. It wasn't just because yeah. oh, nobody wanted Liverpool to win the league. I didn't mind. I'm like, you know, we've got Rafa Benitez as a sort of like allegiance to each other for that. Yeah. And this, this Liverpool fan <laughs> <laughs> come over. And when they, when they, it was 2 all, and then I think it was Salah scored and made it 3 2. I think it was him. I'm, might have been wrong. And he came over and went, yes, in front of a table of all group of lads, like that, all of us, and smashed all our drinks <laughs> like that. And I was like, I could just feel the cogs going in my brain. I'm thinking, <laughs> you fucking arsehole. <laughs> Didn't do anything there. What, what can you do? You get up and lamp him, someone films it, and then it's like, oh, yeah. no Where brand deals for you. <laughs> <laughs> Gone. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, that, that was one of the painful things about watching Liverpool. Seeing them like go one nil, two nil down, and then in the 80th minute, like they mount this incredible comeback, and it was like a flashback to when I watched my own team do that like 10 years ago. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's a credit to Klopp uh-huh. for what yeah. he's for what he's built, you know. Uh-huh. And I think uh, Ferguson said it as well when um, Klopp came in in 2015, he said. I'm worried about this this lot now. With this uh-huh. guy, with this guy in, I am very worried about this lot. The thing is, the board were patient with him as well. Like, uh, I yeah. think if, if you compare the stats of um, of Ole and Klopp, um, Ole's stats haven't been that much different. Or they were better when he first came in the, uh, than Jurgen Klopp's because Jurgen was, yeah. was didn't have results when he first came in. They were patient with him. I think a lot of the problem nowadays is it's natural for people to go, all oh, right, he's not, we're 10, 15 games in, he hadn't done anything, get rid of him. Yeah. Get rid of him. Uh, and it's just a bit like, 
you don't see anything built yeah. there. There's no like sort of swan songs or love stories with football because they're, they're yeah. just getting rid of players. Well, there's a massive sense of impatience because it's at the end of the day, it's a, it's a money business football. Yeah. yeah. You know, course, all, you, yeah. all you have to do is look at transfer fees and players' wages. Yeah. And see that, you know. Unreal. Absolutely. It is unreal. But look, I want to speak to you about how this all started for you. Like uh-huh. how, like uh, how, how you've got to, to here. Like you've, you've done so much in your career so far and so much ahead of you as well. Yeah. Like how, yeah. how did this all begin for you? Um, honestly, mate, I think I've always wanted to be, always wanted to be an actor really since I was a mm. kid. Always wanted to. My dad's always been quite, uh, I wouldn't say thespian because he's, he's, he's hard as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, he's always been, you know, theatrical, I guess. So he's yeah. always want to be the center of attention. Um, I just, I've, I've always been a movie buff, mate. Cult classics, everything. I've just, I, I've always been fascinated by it. Yeah. And I, I just, honestly, to pinpoint where it all started, I think, I, obviously, you know, I'm a, a, obsessed with uh, Robin Williams. He's my freaking yeah. idol. I think he's the king of improv. I've never seen anyone who can make such sort of impartially even just bland jokes, but his energy yeah. make funny. He was, he was just great. I just love the fact that he could come in and say anything and just, he, his, his brain was, you know, like a quantum computer. It was, it it was yeah. Um, and uh, I just, I don't know, mate. I think um, it was Facebook, I think, that launched me. I just did Family Guy impressions. Mm. And they were obviously, everyone loved Family Guy back in the day. Yeah. A couple of, I did like, Four or five Family Guy impressions, and people were like, "Oh, that's good." And yeah, that was good. You know, maybe I'll put a video up. If this was 2012, I think when yeah. social media wasn't really like, obviously it was it was prevalent, but it wasn't like you wouldn't put in content out. It wasn't just YouTube. Yeah, I did Family Guy impressions on my personal profile, and it got like a thousand likes, I think. Which back then in 2012 Huge. was like, "Wow, viral!" Wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Um, and then I started YouTube then, and I did this video called Guy Does a Real Clickbaity Title. And con- considering I knew nothing about sort of uh, being a creator, yeah. I did a clickbaity title. It was 2013. Guy Does Awesome Impression in over five minutes, right? But that was the first video I saw. Yeah. None I of those saw you on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, none of them were awesome. <laughs> and it certainly yeah. wasn't over five minutes. It's more like six. But um, <laughs> I mean, the video looked like it was recorded with a toaster. And I just saw, I, I just. <laughs> Went off the top of my dome, didn't practice any of them, just went, oh, these are characters I know. I just want to feel like I'm going to yeah. them. Recorded them on a PlayStation 2 iToy that was connected wow. to Wow. My- <laughs> yeah, my mum's basement. Literally my mum's basement. That's not cliche. I lived in my mum's basement. And, uh, oh Christ, I went to sleep. And all of a sudden, it's a million views. And I'm like, a million oh views God. in 2012 is like, you- yeah. You're like internet famous then. And then I kept pushing it and kept going with it. Hmm. And then started getting into writing as the years come by. And then you start obviously get producers ringing you up then and going, oh, we can, you know, you, you yeah. turn, let's get you on this, that and the other. And then Jimmy Kimmel. And then it just all snowballed from there. Yeah, but, um, yeah man, I'd probably say that's how it started. Just just did what? to try it and did it. Well, the whole thing with, with Jimmy Kimmel as well, and that's what I wanted to, to get into. Um, you've covered so many like TV shows and film franchises. Film. And, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Look up. <You're> fucking Irish. <laughs> you've covered them so well. I mean, I think you started with The Walking Dead. Yeah, and, that's right, yeah. And the big one, obviously, was, was Game of Thrones. Uh-huh. And now you're doing Peaky Blinders. Vikings, like you, uh, yeah. Vikings. It's every TV show that has become like extremely popular. Yeah, with audiences worldwide, you've covered and you've covered like I'd say eight on average, eight to ten characters. Well, a Game of Thrones, yeah. I think you do about thirty, but like yeah. <laughs> you've covered so many characters in those TV shows, and yeah. it's a genius move. It really is. I've you know, I've always uh, admired that. I've always like, I've always thought to myself, you know, the next TV show that'll be on the big one. I know Schaefer's going to be covering so many of those characters. Yeah. You know? If they're impressionable. I, I, I think for me, I just try and, I try and keep things uh, as pop culture as possible. Like with, with you do, you've got a, like you've got a fantastic mix in yours as well. But I think the, the, the genius of what you do is because you do all the cult classic Hollywood actors so good. Yeah. Uh, like Robert De Niro, Pesci, yeah. uh, even like Woody Harrelson, <clears throat> which is my favorite impression you do. 
like thank you you keep them alive <laughs> essentially like you yeah. do like you got to remember like when like they're still alive now and they're incredible actors and they're still churning out movies yeah when they die like it's it's almost like Jamie Costa when he did Robin Williams. Like there's a lot of people who are like we come into you because you're keeping the a sort of memory alive with doing yeah. their impressions. Um, but yeah, like uh, with the pop culture stuff, I just try and jump on TV shows because it's like uh, if the show's good, like Game of Thrones. Well, mm. from last season, uh, um, The Walking yeah, Dead, which, pop, uh, which has gone really good now. Um, yeah. I, I do, you know, I I do try and jump on them, but some stuff just doesn't work. You know, it is people go on. Mm. Um, can you do uh, so and so from what's that show? Uh, Ozark. 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 Yeah. yeah like I don't know how. What, what's his name? Jason Bateman. Jason Bateman. It? Yeah. I don't know how he's gonna sound. I don't know. <laughs> like some people are just impressionable. <laughs> Ideally, I, I'm probably. I probably say my forte is doing characters, um, actors who are playing the character uh, rather than actors themselves. Yeah. Um, I think most of my impressions of just actors are, are fucking average <laughs> I've got no, well, the characters I've run away just, with just put out a McConaughey <laughs> video the other day and it was like listening oh, yeah, to, sure. to, to him go on about his his rambling kind of, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know what he was, speaks about these days mate, I, I literally improv that and it was <laughs> I think I went to a dark place <laughs> talking about <laughs> making love to animals if you're Matthew McConaughey I'm like nobody commented on that they just went oh good nice but, uh, yeah, yeah. Man. No, I, I do try and, uh, I try and keep things as pop culture as possible. And then when people say things like, and you'll know this, oh, do Simon Cowell, do, do Anton Deck. It's like, no, do I don't. X, do X Factor voice guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rachel, well, oh. That's, oh, wow. <laughs> and it's even the same now when people go do Family Guy. Like, I know it is still sort of pop culture, but, yeah, I, I, you know, it could be worse. I could be, you know, doing... No, <laughs> I'm going to be doing impressions of people who just nobody knows or they're dead. Or this is, you know. I don't know. <laughs> we won't go into that. But, but we talked about Game of Thrones and that was... Game of Thrones is a cultural phenomenon. It's one uh -huh. of the biggest um, forms of entertainment that I have ever seen in my entire life. Isn't it the most watched show in history? Yeah. And easy. most pirated, I think, as well. And most pirated. Like, <coughs> you jumped on that. And it just went, yeah, for you. Uh -huh. It was like huge, and I think John's like the John Snow. My personal favorite is your Jorah Mormont. That's always been. Uh, you see, <laughs> yeah. day forty-five in the friend zone. I, you know, I haven't done that in since the show ended because uh -huh. I said when the show ends because it was such a big part of my life, and it really was. Like yeah. I said to my housemate last night. I said. Like that really blew me up, Game of Thrones. Like it yeah. was a part of my life between, you know, I only got into the show in about uh, in 2014. The show came out 2011. Yeah. I was still in college. I wasn't doing any of this. I wanted to be mm. a school instructor. Um, and um, yeah, it re you know, I, I, how many people can say I've been on Jimmy Kimmel, even though it's amazing. Um, and it really blew me up that did. Yeah. And, and, and I do owe a lot to the show. And I, I'm friends with a couple of the cast members and, and I owe a lot to them as well because mm. they've always, you know, thrown things out but it became much like the actors because i was doing it so much game of thrones people mm. have flocked to my channel every season um you know and you're never known as schaefer you're john snow guy or that guy who does game yeah. of thrones impressions or that guy who does game of thrones accents <laughs> yeah. that's a funny one um <clears throat> i think what happened was sort of that i i went down the same route almost as the cast you, you because you've been doing it for so long yeah people only know you as that so i got stuck with doing game of thrones i was putting yeah. out other content like the gordon ramsay stuff which thank god is blowing up now yeah um, putting all other stuff out putting all other <clears> sketches <throat> and people were just going oh we want game of thrones and it was the same as you know a couple of cast members they, they've been doing it since 2011 they want to move on like you imagine how hard it is for kit arrington to break the mold of being Jon snow um, yeah so i i i said when that show ended i wouldn't do any more uh, Game of Thrones in they, they're really subtly in some of my videos but I actually haven't really done them since so yeah. doing a Jorah moment for me then is like <laughs> so oh here we are we're back in uh... well there'll be there'll be a chance to revisit it again possibly when there's a prequel show with HBO about Robert's Rebellion or, or whatever they, 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 they want to do it yeah whatever it's, they want some, somewhere down the line you know 
They're doing a House of Fire, aren't they? A House of Blood and Fire. I believe uh, so, yeah. 300 years before the events of Game of Thrones, which is yeah. all about the Targaryens. But that's uh, going to have George R.R. R. Martin on board, so thank you. That's, that's about Aegon the Conqueror, isn't it? That's the one. Because they, yeah. scra- they scrapped um, The Long Night, because they did a pilot with Naomi... Uh, is Naomi Watts? Naomi Watts, yeah. Uh, they scrapped that. They binned it all. Yeah, which is quite strange. I mean, I... Uh, you know, no offense to the cat. The cast looked amazing because that's what one thing the gay, uh, the H uh, sort of Game of Thrones series does is they cast new actors. Like Kit mm. Harrington was nobody. Like the Amelia Clark, yeah. they're all just found on the spotlight, which I love that. So they find new talent. But um, with that that long night, I just don't think anyone wants to know about five thousand years before the events of Game of Thrones. No. Well, I think I, I think the massive appeal is <clears throat> a Robert's Rebellion. Yeah, Pe- people want to see that. Oh, ah, you know? yeah. That people are so curious. Oh, who are they going to cast as Rhaegar Targaryen? What's his character going to be like? You know, who would you who would you cast as Rhaegar? Because I have, I have an actor who I'd cast for uh, Rob, and I have an actor who I'd cast for Rhaegar. Um, I just at the top of my head there, I just thought of one guy. Um, he played the Beast in Beauty and the Beast. That is it, Dan Stevens. Is that his name? I'm not sure. I can't remember. He'd be a he'd be a good Rhaegar Targaryen. Yeah. But if but if if they were to get a big budget and cast a big name, Which they I think they would. Yeah. yeah I. Yeah. What about Rob? Who would you cast as as, as Robert? Robert Baratheon. I mean, was I? I there was I, I heard a a rumor that Tom Hardy was in, yeah. in line to play that part, and then a young Ned Stark as well. I don't know who you cast for that. You'd actually, do you know what? I would cast three, like heavyweight actors three big actors to play the yeah. part of ned robert and um rhaegar i do uh, yeah i'd have i'd have tom hardy as rob i'd have tom hiddleston as rhaegar i was thinking that as well yeah i think he'd be a really good rhaegar he's got mm. that sort of elven sort of look that i know yeah. isn't elves in game of thrones but this kind of that high you know pointy jaw like that yeah. sort of bony face um as for ned i, I don't know I, I don't know what you could do because I just think the guy who played young Ned was fantastic. He was very good, wasn't he? Yeah, he was really, really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You, you'd have to you'd have to have someone to play such a like Ned is such a it's a condensed role, you know. Yeah. It's there's not much personality to him because <clears throat> yeah. of how honourable he is as a character. Yeah, you know? he's a, I, I honestly couldn't think. I mean, I, maybe Jack O'Connell, but I don't know if he'd, he'd facially represent yeah. Ned Stark very well. So I, I don't know. I don't know. You could. I don't know. You Either could. way, it would be interesting. And like, that's the thing. If, if, it might it would bring Sean Bean back in and use the Marvel de aging. Yeah. <laughs> what, do the Irishman did. Just de age him a bit. Just deep fake yeah, him. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, no, it would be interesting. But th- that's the thing. It could be a feature film as well. Because yeah. of how big Game of Thrones has become, you know that's yeah. That's yeah it could do it. I mean, well, the Walking Dead have done, haven't they? They're, they're doing a feature film with that Andrew Lincoln. They are, aren't they? Is this <clears throat> is this film after Rick is? I'm not sure. Death, See, but... I've I've been watching the la- the uh, the latter part of this season, and they've got Angela Kang in now, who's producing it, and she has yeah. single-handedly turned that show around. And the show is so good now. Oh well, I'll, well, I'll have to revisit it. Absolutely, it's so good now. She's really <laughs> turned it around, and like, you know, like uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Negan, he's he's incredible now. Like, he's yeah. my favourite on there. He's it's just brilliant. They turned it right round. He, I actually, I enjoyed him as the comedian in Watchmen. Watchmen, yeah, I yeah, the small part. Uh, did you watch the series? No, I didn't. No, the series is incredible. He's, he's he is good. He's a good actor, very it's, good actor. It's it's batshit insane, but um, I, I wanted to talk as well about like you talk about Jimmy Kimmel, mm-hmm. you know, and you talk about Game of Thrones. Like, would Kimmel be probably one of the the, the best moment of your career or so far, or is there anything else that stands out? Yeah, I I'd probably say so. Um, you know, there's I I yeah. mean, meeting meet the Game of Thrones cast and and and. Uh, you know, when I was a nobody, and them going, you, "You'll shave for baits." I absolutely love what you're doing, mate. And yeah. uh, but not even laughing, being really sincere and and, yeah. and serious, and shaking my hand and going, 
you've done an incredible job there. Like, well yeah. done. That's um, amazing. I, and, and, you know, and, and having some of their numbers on my phone now and, you know, still chatting to yeah. them messaging them saying how are you doing like yeah um but jimmy kimmel definitely i mean the american demographic is fantastic um i've always said yeah. the end goal for me is to play my own character in disney pixar whatever mm. um and and you know have people impersonating the characters that i do one day um and yeah. and i just think that american audience is just they're so it's their culture everything they just love it they lap up everything yeah. when you're british and you're doing um you know, Game of Thrones impressions, and they they love it. And I just uh, like the American fan base. I just owe them a lot. They're incredible. Like, I love the, the British, the Irish, uh, like the, mm. the, all the uh, Australian fan base. have got incredible, but the Americans just uh, they're just on the ball. They just anything you do, they love it. So I say Jimmy Kimmel was uh, my yeah my greatest sort of yeah. And I always I always am, um, and I said this to you as well, time and time again. Always wondered would would you and Kith have done a video together, oh, John no. Snow and John Snow, you know? It's it's weird, mate, because I still think that could happen. Like, it, 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 yeah, it's it's still a possibility that um, it could happen. Um, but you know, and 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 I I have the idea of writing something in. I mean, no, I I was supposed to do something with HBO where I interviewed the cast towards the end of the season. Uh, I couldn't make it though, um, and I kicked. Kit wasn't there. He's, he's like the top of knees. Like, so he's, he's all over yeah. the spot. Um, but um, I, I like the idea of doing a sketch with him where he, I'm trying to force Jon Snow, the character, me doing the impression of him, <laughs> down his throat. And he just doesn't want anything to do with it. And he's been really dismissive. <laughs> but, um, it, it, you know, there's a chance of that. But he, he's, he's quite a reserved guy, I think. He's, he's, yeah. Likes, he lives up in Ipswich, I think. He's just in, out in the country, just very... yeah. Slow but slow I think I think as well, and which is unfortunate, the pressure of yeah. playing that role actually got to him, and I think it got to him in a sense, and especially in the last season, because people expected. Now this is a spoiler for people who haven't watched Game of Thrones. Um, people expected John to be the ultimate winner of everything. That that was what you know. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the predictable destiny of of how game of thrones yeah. was going to end he was going to uh -huh. sit on the iron throne he was going to be the 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 man to kill the night king and that's what people predicted and you know it, it was there was it was kind of as well there was a sense of foreshadowing with, uh -huh. with john snow and the night yeah. king as well which i just found really surprising uh, but i think there was also foreshadowing with, with Arya as well who eventually ended up killing the night king so i think that pressure was on him the actor himself while yeah. all of while the episodes were airing, and I don't think he left his house or anything, and it really no. it affected it affected him mentally. We well, had to go into rehab, I think, from what yeah. I from what I heard, and then uh, I think towards the end of production of season eight, um, remember there was that video of him in that dive bar in New York, and he was really really, yeah. really drunk, um, <clears throat> and I'm not fair fucks to him. He probably doesn't get the chance to um to to go out and drink, and you know a yeah. lot of them didn't experience their childhood. Uh, or, or their yeah. teens, or their twenties, going out and 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 getting drunk with their mates and socialising. Yeah. So like uh, Maisie Williams, who played Aria, for example, I think she's from Bristol originally. Now, Bristol's really well known for its like drum and bass and partying scene, and it's like it's very yeah. the, the musical culture there is probably the biggest in the UK. Yeah. She didn't probably get any chance to do any of that to, to experience any of that. No, um, so it must have been hard for a lot of them because it's you know. But um, in regards to the show, like I. Yeah, I, I, I think it's it's fifty fifty. It's probably like yeah, there's a lot of weight on my shoulders and I've only had about ten lines to say in the entirety of season eight because he doesn't really say much. No. Say. Um and then the other half of it is wow, like all these faces and people I've met, uh, and I've been up to some of the sets in Belfast. Mm. Uh, and uh, Castle Ward and stuff like that. I just think it's stunning. There's something about being around those sets and that part of the mm. world that's like i just felt like uh, sort of butterflies in my stomach so imagine you're leaving that after what 11 years as well must be must be pretty tough because yeah i don't think he's doing it he's good what's he doing next marvel the eternals he's, uh, i believe he's the lead role in the yeah. eternals and um richard madden is yeah playing one of the villains which is great that's brilliant i love to see yeah. that it's nice you know that is, yeah. it's it's a great thing to see and richard madden is he's you know, made fantastic strides since, since he left Game of Thrones. When did he go out? Season four? 
I think it was season, season three. It was three, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's it's crazy because the cast have all done different things. Like, uh, who's the guy, who, Jack Gleason, who played Joffrey? Like, he's quit acting. Quit it, yeah. Doesn't do it. Uh, he's a very intelligent guy. I think he's gone off to study. He's, he was studying in Trinity College in Dublin. Yeah. Um, I don't know what he was studying. Uh, he's he's an incredible actor. Yeah, he's in, he was in uh, the Dark Knight, wasn't he? I mean, if if for a good, for a lad at that age to convince you know millions of people that he's a little shithead, shithead and, yeah. and you just want to hate him. That's, that's amazing acting. He, yeah, that's he's incredible. like, you know. You really from, hated his character. Oh, massively. Like, and he played it so, he played it so well down to a T. Like, he had problems with people actually hating him though. Right? That must be difficult. That, yeah, <laughs> it is difficult. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's kind of like as well. It kind of reminds me of the soaps, you know, like EastEnders or Coronation oh, yeah. Street. Like there's, there's a soap in, in Ireland called Fair City, uh -huh. which is unbelievably popular. And my grandmother, God rest her soul, like she, she used to watch it all the time, you know, and she like would watch it. There'd be three or four episodes a week and she would make sure that she was sitting down at whatever eight o'clock to watch it. And my auntie and uncle were friends of one of the cast members and he did something in the show. And she went up to him, Alan was his name, she said, you, 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 you are very bold for doing that now. You are very bold. You shouldn't have done that. You, know, <laughs> you shouldn't have done that to that poor fella. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, I'd imagine they were a lot more aggressive towards um, Jack Leeson. Oh, yeah, I know. Which, it's, it's crazy, man. It's a TV show, though, do you know what I mean? Oh, I know. It's, it takes it back to what we do. We just do impressions, and people can be, you can get assholes who say things to me in the street. It's not like I'm, what, what yeah. I, I'm playing either a fictional character yeah. Um, uh, who, who's saying things that he'd never say. It's outlandish. <laughs> That's the yeah. idea. It's, it's parody. And people are going, can't believe you said that as Matthew McConaughey. I can't, I can't believe you said that. What was the other one as well? I remember someone said to me, I can't believe that you'd do uh, racist jokes as Donald Trump. I was going, well, they're not jokes. I'm parodying him. He said some pretty racist things. I'm yeah. not saying I'm repeating what he's saying and turning mm. it into uh, into humour. I'm, I'm the only person who should be offended by that is Donald Trump. Me taking the piss out of him. Well, that's essentially it. That's that's Trump's whole yeah. spiel. You know. I can't believe you'd say that. Have you seen what he's doing? Have you, you seen know, what he's saying for fuck's sake? Are, are you are you going to do a Donald Trump impression where you're completely politically correct? Yeah. <laughs> People will like watch that and go, okay, what the hell is that? You know? Yeah. You're parodying the character in a sense. That's that's what that's the, what the character yeah. repeats and says uh, it's, it's all the time. People, uh, you can't legislate stupidity though, but he or no, like, absolutely not. But I wanted to go into as well, 2016, the first yeah. time I met this wow. this beautiful gentleman here, um, in Cork of all places. Uh, you oh, were down. Yeah. You, you were down with Mr. Keane Toomey oh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and Emily, and um, I was I was down in Cork <coughs> uh, on RTE Radio One for the Joe Duffy Show. For everyone who knows that in Ireland, it's in England, it's like the big daytime radio show. And yeah. he does he does a, a sketch uh, based show every month called Funny uh -huh. Friday, and uh, I. You were down in Cork, and conveniently, I was down there too. So, after that show finished, I um, text Keane, knocked up to the apartment, and we met for the first time. Yeah, that within, was it, yeah. Within 40, 40 to 45 minutes, we started recording our first ever video together. That's right. Yeah. And Keane had the pad, and he had each impression. It went two impressionists meet. Um, but he didn't he didn't tell us he just said what impressions can you do and we said yes. and then he we just had to go off the cuff with that off the cuff went, with it completely <laughs> and then i think that's when we were kind of like fuck and i i searched that video last night on, on uni lad who didn't tag us in the caption <laughs> thanks uni lads well they're gone now <laughs> only in the comments they're gone yeah only in the comments they tagged us and we still got a few followers from it but that video well, I don't know what it, what the views are on the other uh, platforms, but that has thirty eight point five million views. Unreal, really, lad. 
Unreal. And that was our first video together. Uh huh. And and it, do you know what's funny about that is <laughs> that's how many? When was twenty sixteen? Because I'm dyslexic with maths. Four years ago. Four years ago, right? In four years, we've done three videos together. <laughs> Video yeah. yeah, but but there'd be too much saturation. Imagine if we did, you know. I know, but uh, we. I've always said like, um, I, I. There's not many people I I collaborate with other impressionists. I don't. Um, I'm very yeah. much. Uh, we're sort of like Rob Brydon, Steve Coogan. It's, it's only obviously we're very good friends as well. But I, yeah, I, out of all impressionists, I I'd always. Like we've even said when we with like work, I pitch you for something. So we like mm. you know, Al's the man, or any any time I do any you know um, a production for any TV. And likewise, yeah. Like Al, get Al in, get Al. Yeah, because um, we bounce off each other well, and um, mm. some you know some some people like my humor is quite crass and fucking abrasive, and <laughs> um, uh, and then you balance that out perfectly as well with yours because it's kind of like. Like any time we do Joe <laughs> Pesci, so was, uh, I just think we, everything we do just seems to anything we have done has done well. Yeah. They've always always done well, so it's just it'd be, it'd be perfect, mate, if they could just stick us on Saturday Night Live in America. It would it would be it would be absolutely ideal. I mean, it would be, and and any time we have got together, we've we filmed content together, and it's it's always done well. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and it's, it's this whole thing, you know, uh, me and you have always been, we've always had a firm belief that two of our kind working together just creates pure magic. And yeah, man. Our, like those videos are the proof. You know, that was, rec that was recorded on an iPhone. That's I know, well, exactly. None of them were like high production. We just went, oh, should we do this? I remember that. Yeah. Um, well, no, I was going to say, I, I've always said about you, what, what, what's lucky about our partnership is that, when we first met, it wasn't like, oh, what impressions you do? Oh, I do Christopher Walken. Oh, I do Christopher Walken. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I do Matthew McConaughey. Oh, I do Matthew McConaughey. It's like, yeah. I do Matthew McConaughey. You do Woody Harrelson. Uh, yeah. I do Christopher Walken. You do Joe Pesci. Like, all, a lot <laughs> of our characters, a lot of um, the actors we play have just so, just so happens we do the opposite and they start each, uh, next to each other in yeah. movies and stuff like that. Um, so we've never really clashed, although I, I, I find it funny. I was saying to you before that there's impressionists out there. Cause I, I've always said, I don't, I try not to class myself as an impressionist. I don't know what it is. Cause I've always said, I'm, I've always been a voice actor first. And I think when I, yeah. myself as an impressionist, I lost, um, the passion for voice acting and I've got that back now. But anyway, that's another story. Yeah. It makes me laugh when, <clears throat> uh, you, you, you do an impression of someone and, uh, and there's other impressionists who are known for doing this character. And they're like indirectly tweeting about you. Oh, why is he doing my my characters? Like they own Matthew <laughs> McConaughey. Or yeah. They own. Uh, and I'm not going to name this person, but uh, anytime I do a character that they're known for doing, uh, they get really, yeah. really pissed off as if they they that that person belongs to them. They're the only yeah. person. Christ well, them. like we both do. Like I learned Gordon Ramsay from you. Oh, I've always said this. Right, it's you know, like I've learned McGregor from yours. It's it's not, yeah. it's not a great McGregor, <laughs> but it's um. But I I, I picked it, I I didn't learn it from McGregor. I've learned it off you because you. Said yeah, but it's get like that. That McGregor, your McGregor is improving constantly. I remember you got you got drunk once in the bar in in uh, in, <laughs> in Cardiff at Lab Twenty Two, and you went and yeah and anyone who's watching over Al is the if you meet him in person the loveliest person he's too lovely I'm like the de I'm like the devil on his shoulder I am the one who's like, gonna be a bit of a cunt sometimes and uh, <clears throat> we just sat at the bar like that we, we said, I don't know it was like it must be midnight now, this is Gavis gone but it's my prop for whiskey we just sat at the bar like that and he went ah, Schaefer you, you're a very good impressionist but that Conor McGregor is <laughs> it's fucking shite you were like, <laughs> guy went, <laughs> I thought if anyone else said that, you get offended. I just went, yeah, you know, this, this man is the best, does the best Conor McGregor on the planet, <laughs> telling me it's shit. I'm going to listen to it. And you went, and I remember saying that. And I've always said, <laughs> I think that's why I improved it and just listened because I'm like, right, okay. I'll, I'll. I remember the next day. I think I remember saying it to you and you were like, no, no, I didn't. No, Schaefer, I didn't say that. I was like, <laughs> you were like I don't know if you said the Conor McGregor, you went your Dublin accent or something. You went, it's terrible, Schaefer. 
And I went, yeah, I know it is, isn't it? I tell you what, um, when I had a dialect coach when, um, in my days of uh, voice acting all the time and uh, working on my TV show, Icon, which was a flop, um, they said that the Irish, because uh, Welsh is notoriously hard for people who aren't Welsh to do, because anytime people do Welsh, they go, hello, I am from Wales. Yeah. Like, well, you're not from Bangladesh or something, Jesus. Um, uh, but uh, I was told by my dialect coach, uh, uh, Ireland is notoriously hard, Irish, uh, especially around Dublin, because there's so many different dialects, mm. um, and so many different counties. Like, um, I, I like... can do Northern Irish and I can do Southern Irish, but then if someone goes, oh, do, do, uh, do Crumlin or do, um, where's that place in Ireland where my former manager was from? Black? Black Rock. Rock. Yeah, hi, Schaefer. How are you? Yeah, great. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like, but it's like I, anywhere else. I'm like, oh. but that's that that that's a D four accent. So there'd be the D four. This is what I mean. Like, what the fuck side. does that mean? Yeah, Dublin four is it's like the postcode. So yeah, it'd be Jesus. Dublin four, and the, you know they're very much like that. And yeah. they speak like that. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then you go up the road up the north side, and you know, they sound pretty much like that. Oh, really? Right, how's it going? <laughs> uh, come on now. And I, like and then out you go another half an hour up the road and then you're in, you know, County Loud. They talk <laughs> like that. You know, it's it's, it's <laughs> so you're talking about a sixty minute distance, right? Three different accents. <laughs> uh, I mean it's a bit like that in Wales, like you go to different parts of the valleys and you go, Yeah, oh, fuck it. Oh but you who know, those fucking impressions and then you go <laughs> twenty minutes down the road to Cardiff and you've got boys talking like that. How's it going, mate? All right. And you're like, and then you go half an hour up the roads, and then you've got Barry, where they talk like that, which is like Cardiff for a bit more. <laughs> so it's all, oh, what's occurring? And all yeah. that. It's, um, it's, it's madness. It really is. But I love the Irish. I love Ireland, man. I, I, I've always said since uh, I went to Cork uh, to see Kean, I just think it it's very much looks like Wales. Like, uh, mm. There's something like untouched about the place. It's like... Um, I, I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's very fantasial. It's not even a word, by the way. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I've always said I'd love to, re- I'd, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd love to have a home there or retire there. Well, I've oh. always enjoyed going to, to Cardiff. Yeah. Myself. Wales. You know, we've, uh, we've always had great fun there. The bars in Cardiff are, like, fantastic. I mean, I mean ironic that time, every time you've come out to Car- uh, Cardiff, there's always something going on. We went to London that one day. <laughs> there's nowhere to go! <laughs> that's there's l- nowhere to go! That's because that's London is like a feckin', it's like, it's like a map that Rockstar Games produced. It's huge, oh, it's too big, everything is sprawled out. Whereas Cardiff is just nice there, compact, city, yeah. compact, yes, absolutely. I gotta find that video of you having a breakdown with a burger in your mouth. There is nowhere to go. <laughs> That's uh, I actually have that, you know, have that listed down there. I, I, um, those two days we spent in London, hottest days ever in L- London. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I'll never ever forget thirty. It was a thirty-two degrees at um, eight o'clock in the morning. And me and you shared a bed because we stayed at my mates, didn't we, in Richmond? In yeah, we give bed. a shout out to George. Yeah, George, George housed us. George Bateman, top and yeah. tail, and Al did. Like sticky thighs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we were. Yeah. And, um, we were only drank... known each other a month. <laughs> I know. And he lived around the corner from um, Tom Hardy, didn't he? he did, we? Yeah. yeah. Really lovely part of London, Richmond. But we were I looking just... out for Tom Hardy, weren't we? Yeah, I just remember you. <sighs> you like this one morning. I was still, I was flat out asleep, <laughs> open my eyes like that, and you just, <laughs> like, yeah, uh, sang out the corner of the bed, like, <sighs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> See, I remember just how hot it was. And then we went, and then we went and did that live stream of uni, lads, and I got fucking, we were steaming. We were hot. <laughs> I was think, a bit more drunk than you. But... Big sweaty heads <laughs> on his yeah. red face, All everything. My hair stuck to the side of my cheek and we'd been drinking in camden i think or something we were yeah and then we just went straight in popped in to go and do uh, uh, that live stream um people telling us to do impressions and just ignoring them <laughs> <laughs> that was an adventure though that Those was two uh, days where it was mental well, i felt like i'd gone on a, br- a, a brilliant holiday but listen uh when things go back to normal we'll definitely have to um 
look at really collaborating together. Get oh, in it absolutely. UFC. I'll learn Absol- my mic biz thing. 100%. We'll do that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, obviously, I wanted to speak, speak to you about... I tell you what, actually, yeah. sorry to interject. The yeah. next McGregor fight that's in New York, which I missed because I didn't come to you last time because none of my mates wanted to go with me and I felt a bit nervous flying on my own. We'll do that. We'll go to the next McGregor fight. 100%. Absolutely. Send location, you know. Send location, Madison Square yeah. Garden. I was, I was in Madison Square Garden for the first UFC event where he beat Amazing Eddie Alvarez. Venue. Absolutely incredible venue. Oh, it was incredible. I mean, that performance, that was his, be- his great, well, I don't know, I mean, the Cerrone performance is definitely up there, but the, the Eddie I Alvarez. S- Alvarez is in his prime, so I'd say Alvarez. Alvarez mm. was doing all right, wasn't he? I mean, he was just technically incredible in that fight. McGregor, you know, didn't even didn't he even get hit? Did he? No, he didn't I, even get hit. Uh, I like I like where he's going now. He's he's uh, yeah. on him finally acknowledging you. <laughs> uh, like, he's like yeah 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 yeah. Can I have that one? You little what do you say? You little shite or something? He's I'll, I'll give you that one. Al. I'll <laughs> give you that one. Al, you little bollocks. Your little bollocks. So I, yeah. I was I was very happy with that. <laughs> yeah, mate, I, but, I'm glad you and he followed you as well. I'm glad. Ah, that, yeah, it was. It was it was a great moment. I was delighted, you know? And then I realized, and, and then he commented, he goes, I appreciate the laughs, Al. Thanks so much. Yeah, he follows up and he never give, does that. Give the impression the rest though. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's tracking me now on Twitter. He goes, yeah. <laughs> in case I don't upload it under McGregor. Yeah, well, the thing is, you, it's, it's funny when you do impressions because it's like, <laughs> you're not taking the piss out of the person. You, you, you know, you're just acting yeah. as them, you, you know, but it is, it's nothing you can say to someone who actually does take the piss out of you in an impression. Yeah. Like, what can you do? I don't, I, I, it doesn't sound like me, Al. It doesn't sound... <laughs> well, that's great. He's doing great things now with the, you know, for, for the HSE the yeah. health service in Ireland. Yeah. You know, he's, he's donating a lot of money and he's been very active on his Twitter about it, which is great. And it's great to see, you know. Um, he's, in, he's in a good place, I think, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you've seen him for the, the Cerrone fight. You know, he was in that focused kind of, um, that focused frame of mind that he was in in 2015 yeah. and 2016. And when, when you have a Conor McGregor like that, it's a very exciting prospect. I, I think, vet, you know. Yeah, he's, 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 he's stupidly intelligent. Mm. I don't yeah. care what anyone says. He's a very, very, very intelligent man. You don't, mm. you don't end up, um, you know, that, that rich and famous from being thick unless you fly mm. Mayweather, but, um, but then you can be the best boxer of all time. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah he's, he's very, very intelligent guy. Very intelligent fighter all around. Mm. So. Yeah, his, his IQ of combat sports in general like boxing is is amazing yeah you know it's it's very interesting to hear how he breaks down a fight you know even a fight he's not he's not involved in you know give him his stake of the ufc for fuck's sake (laughs) (laughs) we'll see how it happens yeah but i i I wanted to speak to you um about a little something serious obviously you're you're, Mm -hmm. you're you're kind of an advocate for for mental health and the well-being yep. of, of mental health and you always have been and it's it's always been a you know it's 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 always been admirable as well and commendable and i've always you know thanks man it's a, 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 something of a massive amount of respect for you uh-huh. or you know yeah no I, I it's close to home for me i lost a good friend of mine to suicide and yeah. Um, I, I went through a phase in my life where I've, I, I must have said, I'm very open about it. I remember saying on True Geordie's podcast, um, I, I went through a time in my life where I computed in my head so many different ways of killing myself. And, um, mm. and, the, the, and, and, and it's hard because mm. I convinced myself I was everything. I mental, I need to be sectioned, everything. Um, and mm. I wasn't saying it to anyone. I wasn't going around and acting on anything. I, my brain was just telling me it was intrusive thought. Mm. And there's people who go through that on a daily basis. And I, I say, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. It's not, it's not nice. Yeah. Um, the byproduct of it is it does make me creative and I meet people like you and, and, I, and it mm. distracts me. I'm nowhere near in the same place I was five or six years ago. Nowhere near. Yeah. And people might go, oh, is that, is that down to financial success? Is it down to, you know, uh, getting a bit of uh, acknowledgement, reputation, fame? Uh, no, because that, I was still depressed when that was going on. In mm. fact, I had a nervous breakdown about a year ago uh, and, and I was doing well. Um, mm. But all I'd say to anyone who's 
who who um who constantly has these thoughts of they're not you know they're worthless and there's nothing's going to go well for them um is if if i told you uh not to think of a pink horse al i guarantee a pink horse did flash in your brain at some point mm. if you say to yourself every day i am worthless and uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I can't get through this. Mm. Uh, you, your brain is is going to think it. You, you've got to get out of that mindset, even if you force feed it. Your brain is a, is a gland, um, and it is powerful. But you can totally rewire your brain, totally rewire it. And and, yeah. and just because you've had six, seven, eight bad years, um, you know, as I always say to people who, who who say to me they feel suicidal. Just think before you consider, you know, the damage that you're going to leave behind, because I've seen mm. it firsthand. You are yet to have or experience the best day of your life. Mm. Um, and that's what people should think. I don't even know if I've had the best day of my life yet. And, and I always say, um, you know, when my friend passed, I, I'm sure in his last breath, uh, he thought, shit, what have I done? Um, mm. Your one instinct as a human is to survive, and I think you should always keep hold of that. And if you're feeling down, talk to someone about it. This yeah. sounds very cliche, but it, it, to talk to someone about it, even if it's six months, you're like, I'm talking and nothing's changing. Just because you've had six months uh, of hell doesn't mean you're not progressing. Mm. It, it takes time. Your brain quite literally will rewire. There's no cure for anxiety. There's no cure for anxiety and depression. Um, <laughs> but... Um, but you will get through it and you will learn to live with it. And yeah. I, I, it makes me sad when I see people who are like, I feel worthless and, and, I, and I can't move on because you, you can. And a lot of it is, mm. I, I'm from a family of travelers, um, uh, boxers, travelers, military. Mm. Uh, I'm from a very hardened family. There's no time to be depressed or sad. Um, oh, get over it, man up. That was a lot of it. Um, mm. And now, you know, you see a lot of the blokes in the family in their 50s, 60s depressed and they're talking to me about it. Um, yeah, and I'm like, you know, a lot of it is, you know, people are too scared. Oh, it don't make it don't make you soft to mm. say to someone that's how I feel. I don't think there's a harder person than someone who's battling with themselves every day. Yeah. Um, so I think I just encourage people to fucking talk about it. Just, yeah. and just say to someone, if if you're a burden on them, talk to someone else about it. Mm. If they think, oh God, here he goes again, fuck them. They're not your well, friend. Uh, like, you know, from a positive standpoint, it's become a lot easier to to talk about to talk yeah. about how, how you're feeling you know years ago it was ah jesus you know this is annoying ah what's he talking about ah, ah he's grand he's grand he's grand he's just a bit down that's it yeah you know that's and it was yeah. always brush brush it under the carpet brush it under the carpet you know a but now was, yeah keep brushing it under the carpet and then it it, it builds up on you yeah. like a fucking benign tumor so yeah you know and and, and, and like that the world the world progresses in both negative and positive ways. And I think with mental health, it's progressed in a very positive way, you know, yeah. where, where people can speak out and people, you know, can, people can be heard and people can get the, the necessary help that is needed. Yeah. Um, you know, That's it's, it's a massive, it's a massive thing in Ireland as well. It's, it always has been. And we've all like, we've all had our bouts at mental health. I've had my bouts at mental health. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've all had, I've, I've, sp I've openly spoken to you and I've said, I don't feel, I don't feel yeah. as if I'm as if I'm good enough at what I'm doing, Shaper. Yeah, yeah you, you know, have, yeah. I, I've I've said to you, maybe I should maybe I should give it up and get another job. You know, I've I've said that on countless occasions where I thought strangle you in your sleep if you didn't. I, <laughs> I think I did threaten you. <laughs> I think you did. Yeah, you, you, you did. I'll, I'll smash your fucking head in by you. Don't you dare. You know, and and I've had a reason about with 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 comments that I that I've read and yeah, that you did, to yeah. me. You know where I said I was going to leave Facebook and then two weeks later I come back, you know, but, but it, it does, it, it can get to you, you know, yeah. These, these hate, unfortunately, is such a prevalent thing in social media. Yeah. My God, it's everywhere. And, you know, I, 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 I thought, I thought we, we, you know, everyone could have learned from Caroline Flack, you know, yeah. which was so, so sad, uh, you know, what happened to that poor girl and you know and it looks like nobody's learned from it you know oh they fuck mate nobody's learned it's, it was it's almost like it was a novelty yeah and it is so dangerous well um, when i say no but i'm sure some people have you know there is there are compassionate people out there who probably realized you know ah, maybe i need to change a little bit but i i, I don't think the majority of people have 
you know, have well, learned from that. And, and you always, the thing is with me, I see a, I see a pattern in the, the hate comments. I hate comments. I've always said to you, they don't, they don't bother me. Mm. Never have. I've always been Teflon to it. And the reason is that is because I'm quite analytical. I know the type of people who were who, yeah. who insulted me. Um, I know exactly what they are. And I always wonder what's going on in their life for them to take, mm. the, you know, the time out of their day to insult <clears> you. It's like that old Ricky Gervais joke about, you know, someone puts a sign up in a, a town square saying guitar lessons and mm. someone comes in and goes, what's this guitar? Hello, are you doing guitar lessons? Yes. <laughs> I, well, I don't want any. It's like, okay, fine. It's not yeah. for you. Don't worry. Um, so when people <clears> go out of their way, I'm like, you're literally taking time out of your day to come and, and, and be pissed off at something that you didn't have to read. So I don't care. Mm. It's, um, and I'm sure you'll agree with this point. I think the biggest battle is self doubt in, your, in yourself. Is, yeah. is, uh, I've had times where I've said to you, I, I, I went through a phase where I strongly believed that people were um, uh, t- telling me I was really good at what I do, but because they felt sorry for me. I truly believed that at one point. I was like, I'm actually not good at what I do. And I still <clears throat> self-deprecate and say I'm very average at what I do. I'm not going to be doing impressions forever. I, I'd like mm. to be, uh, uh, you know, Endgame is in Hollywood. And people still laugh and scoff at that like they did when I first started doing YouTube. And when I said I, I wanted to get a million followers, did that in nine months. People mm. laughed and scoffed. Um, anything, anything, any, any, set yourself a goal anywhere you want to be. You'll, you'll do it as long as you're strong-willed. But I'm sure you'll agree the biggest battle is, is self. Is self yeah. death. It's, it's, it's a bitch. Well, absolutely. I mean, it is. And I'm incredibly lucky. You know, I have, you know, Alison has, has been my partner now for three years. And we have Sophia, who's one, she's, she's a year old. My goddaughter. You're good. <laughs> you got it, man. But Alison has been a great support hub. And I've had those conversations with Alison where I said, Jesus, am I good enough for this? And she's, she's reminded me and she's, she said, you know, look what you've done. Look what you've, you know. Yeah, exactly. Look what you've done so far. He goes, don't, just don't give it up all for nothing. You've worked so hard for it. And I think as well, if, if, if you get a sense of ambition and you want to work towards a goal, it, yeah. that, that becomes a little easier. Yeah, 100%. You know? right. And don't forget, like, well, how, long, it truly does. how long have you been doing it? Seven years, so same time as me and you, seven, eight years? Yeah, well, I, I did my first gig 10 years ago Yeah. Um, when I was 18. It was before my leaving cert, which is the equivalent of the GCSEs. Uh-huh. in ireland like three months before i was focusing more on this gig than studying for my <laughs> yeah yeah for my end of end of school exam priorities um but i remember doing that gig and i remember thinking to myself that you know i did 20 minutes of material that i had written out and then an hour of it because it was a local gig so uh-huh. all my all my mates were there an hour of it was pure improv impersonating people who i know yeah, impersonating teachers given out to those people who are in the audience, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's class. That's how, that's how, how far it starts. So I was going to say, like, just just think, you've been doing it. I'd, I'd say, how long have you been doing the social media stuff? Six years, seven years. Um, yeah, properly, properly five to six yeah. years. Yeah, about the same, in we? We both sort of come on the scene on Facebook at the same time. Yeah. just think that is. You, 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 for me, you giving up would be such a waste of talent because that is just scratching mm. the surface. There, there are people like, look at Lady Gaga, for example. It's taken her like 18 years to get to where she wants to be. So you imagine me yeah. having gone four or five years. That is absolutely nothing. That's just, yeah. There's a whole other audience out there, like the fucking Tiger King videos I've done the other day. I'm giving yeah. it to another brand new audience now. There you go, it's um, another audience. You, you've got to you've got to imagine if you gave up you'd <clears> given up on everything there's a lot of people um uh, up and coming you know younger impressionists who look at you and go you know you're going to go down as as uh, you know as an iconic impressionist um so it'd just be such a fucking waste if you gave it mm. up so don't ever give it up because i'll sure I, i'll come <laughs> after you <laughs> but i as well and that's that, that's another thing about s- some of these young impressionists coming up like they've watched our videos uh-huh. You know, and that's and that's terrible. That's blown smoke out of our <laughs> arses. But th- that's kind of what they want to emulate. They want to to be doing that in, in years to come. They want to be, yeah. you know, look at these two guys coming together. You know, yeah. it's 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 kind of a thing. I put up. You seen my tweet that I put up? Which one was that now? I put I put it up yesterday. I mentioned every single impressionist. Oh yeah, it was nice to see Zach Clayton on that list because he's he's up and coming. He's yeah, um, absolutely yeah. Well, I mentioned myself, yourself, Zach, 
uh, Steph Todd. You see, have you seen Steph Todd's work? I'm having a look. Oh yeah, she's um, is the girl, isn't it? Yeah, she's fantastic. Yeah, she's fantastic. I do follow her. She's brilliant. Um, Connor Moore, obviously Connor's killing it over in the USA with the golf impressions. Colin's brilliant. Um, Darren Farley. It's a Colin then, Connor. Colin. <laughs> Colin Moore. Darren uh, Farley. Yeah. Uh, Darren Farley. Uh, Darren Garrahy is an impressionist yeah. in Ireland. Joe Godet, who does the Schwarzenegger impression. I just, I thought to, I don't know, maybe it was stupid of me to send out the tweet. Maybe they're all looking at that like, look at this weirdo. I put Josh Berry down. Who? Josh Berry's brilliant. He's brilliant. Yeah. Josh he's, Berry and Sean Burke. He's, uh, Josh, Josh Berry and Sean Burke have kind of done the same as I've done. They've tried to sort of distance themselves. As I know Josh has, yeah. Uh, Josh, um, I was watching the uh happy hour podcast with him on and he said he, he learned to do gordon ramsay off me as well i'm like <laughs> don't learn off me we learn from you <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he did he done one the other day that was was funny but there's a there's a there's a good few there's some decent impressionists out there man well that's uh, been my I, I, imagine if we were all on a live stream that'd be brilliant but then you know, the, these are testing you know, times these are testing times for for everyone in the world right now. And like, we're very fortunate to have, to have the platform that we have now. Uh-huh. And th- those guys have a massive platform. Imagine all of us together. Yeah. There's in a lot one of e- stream. Some egos there, mind. Yeah, well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because <it's laughs> no, I think when impressions get together, it's like, ah, oh, I want to be the center of attention. I'm very introverted with my impressions. You know, I am. Like when people come up to me in person, I won't do it. When people go do an impression, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, no, nah, no, no. Like you're going to tell a comedian, tell you a joke on the spot. But that's what I was going to ask you, actually. What do you think the worst thing about being in your position is? You never get asked for a selfie. You get asked for a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that the worst thing? Is when someone goes, do a video or do yeah. I, 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 I say yes to them because I'd be afraid in case they, you know. It's because you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're a little pussy owl. <laughs> they asked me. They asked me to do a McGregor, and I, I, you know, I'll do a McGregor. I, sometimes, like I've had people come up to me and ask me to do the most obscure ones, and I'm like, oh, no problem at all. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I think I got. What did I get one time? Butters South Park. I, I think yeah. I think I got Woody Harrelson one time, and I was over the moon. I uh, Brendan Rogers. Oh yeah, was I one. Know you're Brendan. They, uh, they asked me to do. Uh, and, I've only done Brendan Rogers once or twice. Well, you're a but I was walking man, through. Yeah. It was in it was in um, Newcastle in December, and he asked me to do Brendan Rogers, and I was half thinking to myself, "Does he think I'm Darren Farley?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> mate, because da- Darren is the penultimate Brendan Rogers impersonator, and I was thinking, I've never put a Brendan Rogers impression up on my Twitter or my Instagram, maybe once on Facebook. It's funny you say that because for uh, for a while in Cardiff and my mates run about this, people kept going up to me going, fucking hell, I thought you were Irish. What are you doing over here? And we were like, and for a while we've been going, oh, <laughs> I've lived here my whole life, mate. Uh, for a while I'm like, oh, is it because I got a bit of an Irish look about yeah. me? Oh, it turns out my theory is that people actually think I'm you because they just go, <laughs> oh, that's the guy who does impressions. And they go, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I hope people go, oh, do, do that Conor McGregor impression <laughs> you. And like over in Wales, you do it and you're pissing. You're like, shut your fucking mouth, yeah? They're like, yeah. That, oh, but that's fucking class. <laughs> but over in Ireland, they're like, nah, don't, don't do that again. <laughs> well, they say, ah, Schaefer, the, that Dublin accent is, it's fucking terrible. Uh, it's not. It's very good. It's, it's, come, <laughs> it's come a long way it's since your heart's pretty yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Ironically, that yeah. was the night that my nervous breakdown started. Uh, is when you said that. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> um, another thing I wanted to just I wanted to finish on. Yeah. I've always said this to you about doing live gigs. I know it's something that you're 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 not really comfortable about. Uh-huh. You said it to me. Yeah, and I've always wanted to do something with you, a yeah. live, a live show. Yeah, um, I honestly think once you do one, it, it'll be like what? Well, I'm telling you, I'm just as a mate. I'm telling you now, yeah. once you do that live gig, you'll be like fucking hell. What was, uh, I, what was I doing it, all these years? 
Is it a little story? Yeah, because I I'll do it. I said as long as I do it next to you, because I I'm yeah, of course. I'm I'm always I'm too socially anxious to do it. On yeah, my own. absolutely. I, yeah, I you know I've done. <clears throat> I did a Q and A for the BBC about a year ago, uh, which wasn't involved in impressions. There's about eighty people there. I don't expect yeah. ten, and um, I just did a Q and A as myself, and I was yeah. just cracking off jokes as myself, and people thought I was funny. But it's funny because uh, a couple of months ago, when I said to you, mate. I want to do uh, a duo stand up with you. Mm. You said, yeah, okay, well, let's That's discuss cool. it yeah. in the latter parts of the year, which is ironic now because we can't fucking do anything. Um, I went to, uh, <clears throat> I went out with my best mate on a Sunday to this bar called the Golden Cross, which is a gay bar in, uh, in Cardiff. Is mm. all his mates are gay, so he's in around a few pints. And they, uh, there was about 100 people in there, and they were all doing, um, there was a drag queen on stage. They were raising money for the floods that happened in Wales. And I was in there hangover as fuck, just at the bar having a drink. Um, and uh, I, I heard, cut the music. You, you curly-haired little fuck, come here. And everyone was like looking. She said, come on stage, you're the one who does the impressions. And I went, oh my God, and I was shaking. And I was like, I can't say no, because it's charity. Yeah. I got on the stage and she said, right, what are we going to do? And this is nothing planned. I'm going to do three impressions. You do three impressions and the audience has to guess it. I can't remember what I started. I did go, I started off with Gordon Ramsay and everyone was laughing. I was like, oh, okay. And I know yeah. you. I was, I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. And then I cra- cracked like a slightly homophobic joke out as Donald Trump in a gay bar. And everyone laughed. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And I finished with Tommy Shelby from Peaky Blinders. Only one person guessed who it was because for some reason nobody watches Peaky Blinders. <laughs> Like, okay, so I've experienced the highs and the lows there. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, I, now I know what you, you, you mean now. Where it's like it was quite infectious. Yeah. And you're laughing, you're like, oh, okay. It's like, um, it, it's, it's the equivalent of finally driving a car, getting yeah. your license. Yeah. I, like, I only got my, my license in early last year, January 2019. And I was wondering to myself, what the fuck was I doing all those years? What was I, 27 when I got my license? Yeah. And I was getting buses everywhere. It's it's that kind of feeling when you do yeah. a gig. It's like, oh fuck, yeah, that's what it's like. And I, 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 it's just it'd be a nice sort of social experiment to see what it'd be like with me and you alongside each other. No, oh, absolutely. Like I haven't seen that in a while. See, I went to see. Um, it was actually one of the last gigs before everything stopped. I went to see Steve Martin and Martin Short. Yeah. <clears throat> and they were absolutely fantastic. Incredible. They've been yeah. they've been best mates like since the early seventies. You know, they've yeah. worked with each other. Um and the way they bounced off each other was just incredible. But it did, like that popped obviously it popped up in my head, Jesus, you know, hopefully in a few years in a few years' time or a few months' time. You know, I mean, it'd definitely be sooner, we, yeah. We well, could, I mean, we, we might have to scrap this year, mate. We might have to throw it in the bin. <laughs> Unfortunately, this year we go in the bin, but 2021, we could plant the seeds for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, I mean, like I said, I'm down for just doing it again out there. Look, we, there might be a gig where we eat shit, but you don't eat shit. You don't eat shit <laughs> unless you eat shit. And Joe Rogan at shit a lot. And Bill Beer at shit a lot. Everyone, everyone's eating shit at some point. The audience I know is going to find you funny. But build that audience of people who understand what you do. Then you, they come to your gigs and then you know you're getting laughed. <laughs> well, so. look, Schaefer, it's been an absolute pleasure. I love yeah, you, man. pal. You're, and you, mate. you're one of the nicest guys I know. You're one of the most talented guys I know. Um, and it's a pleasure working with you like this. It's a pleasure. All, all the stuff I've done with you, I'm so proud of. Thank it's, you. There are massive highlights yeah. in what I've done. And please, God, in the next couple of years, we get to do even bigger things, fingers crossed. Well, I hope I don't die of corona first. Let's get through that. <laughs> I know. I think I'm through it, mate. I definitely, yeah. for someone who has it, I seem very much fine. So yeah, well, that's good. That's that's also that's very good to hear. And I wanted to talk about that, obviously, at the at the, the top of the you yeah know, uh, it's podcast. All, I think it's all done, mate. I don't think there's any yeah. chance for you to you turn. But cheers for having me on, man. And um, look, uh, we're launching our podcast soon because I bought a studio. We'll get you over to Cardiff. Yes. Um, I got to come over to Dublin as well. I got to, I have to. Got to, got to see Sophia. Yeah, my god, my goddaughter. My goddaughter. <laughs> For anyone who's watching at home, I'm still pissed off that he didn't name me as, as the godfather. 
you you and, and and a few other lads i've don't worry i've got the brunt of it from a lot of people <laughs> i'm on a, on a day with my gun my daughter's one i'm on a, I'm sorry, I'm fucking, I'm fine. There was, there was nothing I could do. I wanted to, I wanted to be, I wanted to be the Godfather. I'm for what? I'm for what? <laughs> I tell you, that's what we'll do. Is when the money comes in thick and fast, we'll pay my production team. We'll go abroad somewhere, and we'll do a, a, a trip style thing. That'll be our next project together. Yes, one hundred percent. Rob Brydon, Michael Caine, a reluctant <laughs> paedophile. She was only 15 years old. <laughs> right, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Safer. Thanks for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Legend. Hey, take care of yourself, man. Me too.